Hey guys, Andy Robertson here, and I'm back again with another video to help you prepare for the CQ exam. And we're sticking with last week's theme, which was reliability. And this week, I'm going to teach you about another important topic within reliability, which is system reliability. All right, let's head over to the computer and get started. All right, let's quickly take a look at today's agenda. So like I mentioned, we're going to cover system reliability. So when you're dealing with a complex system, right, you have to think about reliability as a collection of components and subsystems. And today's lecture will teach you how to calculate reliability when you have a really complex system. And there's two types of systems we want to talk about. The first is series reliability, and we'll do an example of that. The second is parallel reliability. And then we'll come together at the very end and we'll do a combined example where we put those two scenarios together to calculate an overall system reliability. All right, let's go and get started. Okay, like I mentioned, you know, one of the major activities within both quality and reliability engineering is understanding the total reliability of a system for a very large, complex product or process. And like I mentioned in the previous slide, when you think about the reliability of, a, let's say, an automobile, right? This is a powertrain. You have to think about the combination of all the individual reliabilities associated with the components and the subsystems that make up that process. And like I mentioned before, there's kind of two major categories or types of systems. The first is a series system. These are where our components or our subsystems work in a linear series with each other. And the next is a parallel system. So we'll, of course, cover both of those today. Okay, so let's start with series reliability. And I think the powertrain of an automobile is the perfect example of a series system where we want to calculate the overall reliability and we have to think about these subsystems in series. You know, for example, this powertrain has an engine, a transmission, a drive shaft, axles, differentials, wheels. There's all these components in series with each other. And for the whole system to successfully operate, each individual component has to be reliable. And so in these sorts of scenarios, this is how you calculate series system reliability. You can see the equation down here, and it's simply just, we call this R subsystem, right? This is the reliability of the system, is simply equal to the reliability of component one times the reliability of component two times the reliability of the subsystem three, and on and on and on. So let's do an example here, and let's assume that we've modeled these different components and subsystems and at 100,000 miles, each of these components has an individual reliability of 98%. And the question is, what is the overall system reliability if each component has a reliability of 98%? So you'll see I've updated kind of this block diagram up here with the reliability of each particular subsystem. And now we can plug those numbers into our equation here to calculate the overall reliability of this entire powertrain. And that's simply just, you know, 98% times 98% times 98% all the way down until we get the final cumulative reliability of this whole system is 88.6%. So that's a pretty easy example. Let's do one more example, though, where our components have different levels of reliability. So you can see how that kind of factors into the equation. Okay, so let's say we're talking about a dishwasher, okay? And I love talking about at-home appliances because these are things with which we have as customers a really high expectation for reliability. They should be able to last. They should maintain their quality level over a period of time. And that's how we define quality of something like a dishwasher is its reliability. So again, here's that equation for a series system reliability. And again, for your dishwasher to work properly, right, to go through all the phases, filling, washing, draining, rinsing, drying, everything that a dishwasher does, you need a number of different components in that dishwasher, your inlet valve, your electrical controls, your pump motor, your washer arm, all of these different elements or subsystems within the dishwasher all have to work in a linear fashion for the entire dishwasher to work. If any one of these subsystems were to stop working, the dishwasher wouldn't work properly, and that's why they're in series with each other. And so what we can do is let's say that we've, we've done our reliability testing, and let's say that we know that the reliability of these individual components at a 1,000 cycles is measured, right? So the water inlet valve is 90% reliable. The electrical controls are 99% reliable. Our pump motor, right, has 95% reliability. And we've measured the reliability at a 1,000 cycles. What is the overall system reliability after a 1,000 cycles of the dishwasher? Okay, so here we can just simply plug those reliabilities into that equation. 
90% times 99% times 95 times 99 times 97. And you can see I'm just pulling these individual reliabilities down from those subcomponents into the equation to come up with an overall system reliability of 80%. And you can interpret that value in two ways, right? If you have a dishwasher at home, you can interpret this as after a thousand cycles, there's an 80% chance that my dishwasher is going to work correctly. You can also interpret this as, as a big picture, right? If we're an organization and we've produced, I don't know, a million dishwashers, 80% of them will still be operational after a thousand cycles, right? Okay, so now let's move on to parallel reliability. So in a parallel system, when we really need reliability to be super high, we often design our products with redundant pathways where all of the subsystems must fail before the entire system reliability is impacted. So I wanna help you graphically kind of visualize this to understand this, this idea of par in a parallel system. So the way this is constructed is, let's say we have four subsystems, A, B, C, and D, and they're identical subsystems, and they all must fail before the entire system reliability is impacted. Okay, so these are redundant, basically redundant standby systems. And the way we calculate the reliability of a parallel system like this is we take one minus the unreliability multiplied together. So what is unreliability? This is a new term. So unreliability is simply just one minus reliability. So here in this subsystem, we can see that reliability is given as 90% we can easily calculate the reliability of the subsystem as one minus 90% to get 10%. Now, all of these subsystems in this example have the same reliability, which means they also have the same unreliability. So we can simply plug that into our equation, one minus, and now we're multiplying the unreliabilities together, and we can calculate the reliability of this system as 99.99%. And you know, you may ask, oh, is that too high reliability? You know, the answer is it depends on your application. You know, I've, I've included this picture here of the space shuttle or an airplane, or it could be a life-saving medical device. You know, there are certain systems that need to have extremely high reliability because in the event that we were to have a failure, that could cause catastrophic harm, loss of life, all those sorts of things. So again, the reliability that you need obviously depends on your product. Okay, now let's do a combined system example where we talk about a series system that includes parallel systems within it. So let's say we have some sort of a product and our product flows right like this. So we have subsystem A and then we have subsystem B here. And this is actually a combination of three systems in parallel. We have subsystem C here, which is a combination of two systems in parallel. And then finally we have subsystem D. Now the way you'd go about solving the overall system reliability is by calculating the reliability of subsystem B first. So again, this is simply just one minus the unreliability of each component, right? So 50%, 50%, 50%. And that comes out to a overall system reliability of 0 0.875. Then we can calculate the overall reliability of these two items combined together, which is simply just remember one minus unreliability, which is simply one minus 0 0.85, which is 15%. So we've got 15% times 15% equals 0 0.978. And this whole system can be reduced, like graphically, this is what it would look like. I'm gonna go step back so you can kind of see what happened here. We combined these three unique components into a single system that has a reliability of 0 0.875, right? Well, we calculated. Same thing over here. Those two items that were in parallel, now simply can be reduced down to a single system that has an overall reliability of 97.8%. And now that we have these four systems in series, we can simply use the series system reliability to calculate the overall reliability of the entire system. And that's simply just 85% times 87.5 times 97.7 times 95% gives us an overall system reliability of 0.69 or 69%. All right, that was it for today. By the way, if you want these equations and you're preparing for something like the CQE exam, I've got a great free giveaway for you at cqeacademy.com slash free cheat sheet that has 
all of the equations and concepts that are in the CQE body of knowledge that pertain to reliability. And I'm also going to give you a free practice exam. I love practice exams. I think they're a great way to lock in what you've learned and help make sure you're as prepared as possible on exam day. So take those practice exams and stay on that journey to become a CQE. By the way, if you loved this and you really enjoyed it, hit that like button so other people just like you can find the same content. And if you want to stay on that journey to become a CQE, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon. That way, as I publish new videos just like these, you get notified and you can stay on that journey with me. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.